Yeah, good evening, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I want to um, spend this video looking at the, the mixer that I intend to use for this little double sideband uh, transceiver. Um, that mix is needed to, on receive to mix uh, the RF with the, the VFO. Uh, being direct conversion, that VFO is going to be at the same um, frequency as our operating frequency to recover our audio. And then on transmit and reverse, we're going to mix our audio frequency with our VFO uh, and output our modulated RF. Um, so what I'm going to do, right or wrong, I'm going to use the singly balanced um, mixer that I built, or um, not, I certainly didn't design, but I, I used in the original double sideband uh, transceiver some years ago. Um, I'm going to start off with this one because it's, it's, it's a bit simpler to use rather than the more traditional uh, doubly balanced um, mixer here which has two trifolar wound uh, transformers. Uh, this one up here only has one of which it's a standard configuration with a, with a normal primary and secondary um, and only one of those. Uh, the other side having a little 100 ohm trim pot. So a, a lot easier to build. Um, um, so that's, that's what I'm going to start off with for a start. The good thing is, because I build them on those little circuit boards, um, if the performance is really lacking, then it's just very easy to just desolder the three points, take it off, uh, and put another one in its place and trial that. So um, I quite like the way I watch I do the construction, it makes that nice and easy. And like I say, if the worst comes to the worst, um, might look at trying this, uh, if need be, a doubly balanced mixer. And this is the standard configuration here, um, where on this side here, that those two transformers, the, the junction there is directly earthed, and there is an option then to open that up and to insert a 100 ohm resistor there, a little trim pot there, and have the wiper arm going to earth just to, to help balance out uh, any um, imbalances we have in the circuit, either through the transformers or the diodes or whatever. Um, and that's predominantly what this uh, trim pot up here allows us to do, is to, to trim that out, uh, looking for that good carrier suppression um, on, on transmit. Anyway, so it's it's crucial for this particular design here to have the four diodes uh, reasonably well matched for forward resistance. Um, I'm going to use 1N4148s. Um, that's quite okay for the lower HF band. Um, this is not going to be for, say, VHF uh, and higher, so therefore I don't need to get in the game of um, hot carrier diodes or shot carrier diodes. For this, um, this will be fine for, like I say, for these lower HF bands. Um, if you look at uh, texts such as uh, solid state design for the radio amateur and the like, uh, it talks about uh, one technique is to um, forward bias the uh, diode, uh, get a, a small amount of current passing through it, and then to measure the voltage drop across the junction. Um, that's what I've done in the past. You would have seen where I've had um, a single diode, uh, use say a 10k ohm resistor and then uh, just increase the voltage across the, 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 the series pair there to get that bit of current flowing there and then measuring the voltage. Um, and then I do that over um, several diodes looking to, to try and match as close as possible the forward voltage drop um, of, the, of the diodes. I'm going to do something slightly different this time. Um, I'm going to use the, the diode test function that comes with the, um, with the meter. So if I was to go into that particular mode here, um, I've already got a diode hooked up there, so red to the anode, black to the cathode. And you can see up here it's spitting out that it's 0.587 uh, volts across that junction. So I'm, this is the technique I'm going to use for this particular build. Um, so what I've done is I've got my, my pile of 1N4148s, pile of diodes there, uh, and I've sort of gone through and, uh, using that technique there, uh, tried to pass them out into, into bins, so to speak. So uh, I don't know if it's very clear up there, but I've got a, a, a starting to make a bit of a pile of um, diodes. This one here is 0 0.588, 0 0.585, 0 0.584, and as I find them, I just sort of plonk them down. Um, and eventually looking to get four that are as close as possible. Um, so that's that's what I'm going to do. Um, and like I say, uh, I might consider going down to the fourth decimal place. We'll see. Um, in the past, I've, I've stuck with three, and it's been it's been it's been okay. 
So uh, I think we've already got a few poles of so these five there, there's uh, four there, so looking pretty good anyway as it is. So I'm going to choose four of those, uh, and I'm going to start making up the circuit which we'll do next. Okay, so the, the mixer is built, um, and I've currently got it configured here up as the, the balance modulator, uh, as if it was in the uh, the transmit side here. So what it is, we're just going to run through the circuit, so that's what we've built here. Um, in the test configuration down there, it's it's backwards, so I've actually uh, redrawn the circuit to make it a little bit easier to see um, what's what. So let me just come up a little bit here, we'll have a, a quick look at the circuit, uh, and then uh, we'll get into doing a few tests and see how it works out. Right, so um, like I normally do with uh, with my circuits, um, I have on the top and the bottom an earth rail, and the top one and the bottom one there, tied to the ground plane through these, these, these ties here, which also form the mechanical linkage to hold it all in place. So that's that top and bottom line there. Uh, we can see in the middle of the diode ring here, uh, that jumper is the earth to ground, uh, on the other side in the middle there going up to earth is that 100, I say again 10 nanofarad capacitor with the yellow being the audio output there. Uh, the 100 ohm trim pot there for the VFO coming in and I've got it coupled in through a 100 nanofarad capacitor there just for DC isolation. Uh, and um, on either leg of that 100 ohm trim pot is a 22 nanofarad to earth and a um, it's roughly about a 45 picofarad uh, uh, trim cap there, which is those two devices there. Um, on the left hand side we have just a standard FT37-43, nothing special there by way of windings. Uh, on the output side, i.e. the 51 ohm side, uh, is a 10 turns, and then on the input side, uh, which is on the, uh, the diode ring side, is 4 turns, so 10 to 4. So that's the configuration there. Um, right, so what I want to do now is just sort of zoom out and we'll just have a bit of a look at uh, what's what's going on by way of the, the, the test equipment. I'll probably have to come back a little bit there just to try and squeeze it all in. Right, so apologies that I can't quite get all in but that's the best I can do with this particular camera. So what we have there on the, uh, the scope on the left hand side we have the yellow trace is the, the output. That's this one down here, the output of the the balance modulator, this is just not going to work, but never mind, that's what it is. Um, and the uh, the purple trace there is the, the input, so directly coming in from the SIGGEN. The SIGGEN itself, um, I must admit this is working out really well for me, it's the SIGLINT SDG 1032X. Um, for me it's working really well. Um, the good thing is it gives me two outputs, so output one I've currently got set as the VFO uh, and being a direct conversion. Uh, it's currently set up at 7.1 megahertz at 1.416 1 volts peak to peak. So uh, I'm assuming that the, the modulator down here is going to be roughly a 7 dBm uh, device. So I need to have, like I say, that 1.416 volts peak to peak, assuming it's a 50 ohms uh, on the input. Uh, on the output, at the moment, I've just got it set to be the audio. So this will eventually be uh, the microphone coming in. Uh, and I've got that currently set to 1 kilohertz at roughly 700 millivolts peak to peak. And that voltage there is enough to uh, basically get it to modulate, but not going too far and causing additional uh, bandwidth issues on transmit. So it's currently set on 700 millivolts, which can be varied uh, sine wave at the moment. Um, and we can also do a sweep, which we'll do also. Right, so getting back to the scoper here, um, just for interest sake, uh, I've already tweaked up both the trim pot and the uh, trim capacitor to try and balance out that carrier or null out that carrier as much as I possibly can. Um, so at the moment, uh, these, if I was to go back to the, be the same um, same vertical resolution, uh, 700 millivolts uh, per division, so that's, like I say, coming in and that's what's coming out. If I was now just to crank up the vertical amplification on the output you can sort of start to see a bit of fairiness there now if I was to uh, tweak that trim pot you can see that coming out of um, out of balance and the suppression of that carrier is dropping off so it's going one direction through the null and out the other side and for interest sake what I also have here on the computer is the uh, SDR sharp running with the, um, the RTL SDR dongle 
and just up there I'm just monitoring hope you can see that um, monitoring uh, 7.1 megs and you can see there if I, let me just turn off turn off the modulation and we can see there that the residual carrier now I've got the vertical gain there cranked up quite a bit too so and you can see there as I vary that that trim pot you can see we can definitely affect the uh, how much of that carrier is suppressed being like being advised you know we're remembering that this is a double sideband suppressed carrier uh, transmitter so um, I probably won't try and tweak that anymore because I'll be here all day but like I say suffice to say we're trying to get that down to be um, as low as it possibly can right so um, where are we going with this so having now um, I guess adjusted the uh, the modulator to try and um, null out as much as possible the um, the carrier we can now turn on the the modulation so I'll do that I'll, I'll turn on the modulation and as we can see that coming up there on the scope so again on the um, on the frequency chart there on the SDR sharp we can see our two one kilohertz sidebands one upper and one lower we have two because this is a double sideband um, radio not a single sideband uh, and if I was now just to uh, to turn on the sweep, um, I can then sweep from start frequency of say 300 hertz to a stop frequency of 3 kilohertz. And we can see there now that that's modulating there through the band. Not seeing any kind of rubbish out here on the other side. Um, so that's good. Now, for interest sake, what I am going to do, I'm going to now quickly change the VFO. Let me just swing around here and I'll just, just show what I'm going to do there. I'm going to change the, the VFO from a sine wave to a square wave. So waveform square wave. So now we are now driving, as we can see over here, we're now driving this uh, balance modulator with a square wave as opposed to a sine wave and really not seeing any difference at all in the transmit spectrum and now if we just to go back to a sine wave again so back to sine wave now and we're now back to a sine wave coming back around here we can see now back to a sine wave and really no difference at all now, so that's sort of, there's been lots of discussion about, you know, should we be driving uh, mixes with sine waves or with square waves? And um, I've, a few times I've uh, just reposted or resent the link that was uh, put up by um, the Solar Smoke podcast some, some years ago, which had a really good article about um, should you use um, sine waves or square waves for mixes. Um, and that particular uh, video settled on uh, you should really be using um, square waves. Now, what I what I did do, um, and I did, I forgot to mention before, and you know I don't have any script here, so I'm just sort of talking on talking off my head. Uh, let me just turn off the sweep. Um, whoops, Daisy, that's not a good idea. I've just you just started to sweep the uh, the carrier frequency. Let me just turn off the sweep there. I'll go back to a a frequency of one kilohertz on the modulating, which is there. Um, you can see there the residual carrier. What I'll do is I'll just disconnect um, all of the other little wires hanging off this. In other words, the two scope probes, which will help drop that right down. So um, as you can see now, what I've done is I've just disconnected uh, the scope probes. Um, because of the, uh, the SDR, say again, the, um, the SDR or well, the SDR radio down here is so sensitive, uh, any kind of additional antennas hanging off, especially this side here, um, which is the VFO coming in, because this is operating um, as a direct inversion, that is at the frequency of operation. So uh, any kind of leakage around this um, getting out um, was was being picked up. So now if you go back up to the back up to there, it's dropped down considerably. Um, so apologies for not mentioning that before, but it's just it just uh, reminded me now. Anyway, so I'm quite happy with that. So from a uh, from a pure um, performance point of view, I'm going to run with that. I'm hoping not making too many people sick there with the zoom going backwards and forwards. Um, so I'm going to run with that. 
uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy that it's, it's balanced as much as I can get it. Um, so I'm going to set that aside now and next steps will be to work on the receive antenna amplifier. Um, and then we should be in a position to at least get a receive chain going because we'll have the receive amplifier, we'll have the, um, the balanced demodulator. So um, we can then demodulate that um, signal coming in on the RF port. We'll have our VFO coming in at our frequency of uh, operation. And then we should be able to recover our audio through here. We've already built the audio amplifier. So that's, that's ready to go. Um, and then it's just a matter of putting it all together and like I say we should have uh, at least a, uh, uh, an AL0 or a, um, a first go at the receiver. Okay, sorry this is a long video, um, it always tends to be that way but you know, I can't make them any shorter. Um, 73 is all and we'll see you next time. Cheers.